Hi, everybody. Um, welcome to the Knitting with Lucy podcast. This is episode 20. Lucy is actually in the room. We just missed her walking by. I saw her walking in as I started to press play. Where'd you go? It's been a really long time. Um, let me do my intro. I There she is. Hello! You showed up! You showed up! Come here! Come here! She's confused or annoyed because um, my husband, who works full time from home now, works in our second bedroom. And uh, I shut the door, so obviously he wouldn't be disturbed and I wouldn't be disturbed. So she's like, why do you shut the door? She always wants to have an eye on both of us at all times when we're home. Uh, anyway, the Knitting with Lucy podcast, episode 20, For Real with Lucy today. Um, so you can find me on Ravelry as Long Ride Home and on Instagram as Le Jardin Fleur. Um, I've been making this podcast for quite a while now, and it's been about... <laughs> three, four months. I don't know math. It's been since mid-December. Um, and that's been unintentional. Uh, mainly has been due to a forced knitting break related to some medical stuff that's been going on for me. I'm okay. I'm good. But um, I really couldn't knit for a while. And then I've also kind of been not so interested in knitting for some reason. So I've sort of forced myself to be knitting. Um, I love seeing her in the background, it never happens. Hello! Um, so I sort of forced myself to be knitting a bit, but, you know, sometimes you have to drag yourself to your interests, uh, so that's kind of where I'm at. Uh, so that being said, I have a couple finished objects, uh, to show you today that were ones that I was working on in the last podcast. Um, and then I have two works in progress to show you. So really, you'll see I haven't done a whole lot of knitting since we last spoke. So despite time passing, not much has occurred in the knitting life. So what else do I normally say at this point in time? I can't even remember. Um, I'm coming to you from a snowy day in New York. That's why I figured, you know what, I'm home. I don't have much else going on, so I'm going to do this. Um, I left work early to avoid some of the major PM snow that we're supposed to be getting. This is our fourth no nor'easter in New York in March, which is insane. We have had a snowstorm every week for the last three weeks. Uh, I keep taking off of work, which is not something I want to be doing since I get to use my vacation time. Working in a medical, in the medical world, um, I'm not a doctor, I'm a social worker. Uh, working in the medical world though, you don't, hospitals don't, don't close, you know? Hospitals always have to be open, so yeah. Um, so it's frustrating. But I came home early and been knitting and here I am, I figure, you know what? Let's, let's do this. So I put my shirt back on, not that I was, you know, not wearing a shirt before, but I was wearing a pajama shirt. <laughs> put my real shirt back on and here we are, so applause to me. Not really. Okay. And I hope all of you have been doing well. I have been following along with podcasts that I normally watch. If I don't comment so much, it's because I've been really, really tired lately. Um, and so, yeah, but I am watching. Okay, so first finished object. I'll start with a hat. So this is one that I was showing you last time. It is my Lucy hat by Don Catanzaro from Quince & Co. And of course the camera is making this very saturated but this is the colorway Poppy and it's knit in Quince & Co. Chickadee. And Poppy is more of like a pinkish red and it's not, it's, it's a bright color but it's not as nearly as saturated as this like super cherry fire engine red that you're seeing. It's an all over cabled hat, um, like a honeycomb cable. Um, I did a kind of scruffy looking pom pom for the top. Now the unfortunate thing about this hat, it's adorable, but it's way too big. 
Um, the whole body of the hat is big, but I think the main issue comes from the fact that the brim is knit. Um, this is a three by, is it a three? No, it's a two by one um, ribbing. And the pattern calls for you to maintain the same size needle throughout, which I believe was a five. Uh, let me just pull up my Ravelry page so that I have that information in front of me. Like I said, I didn't prepare, uh, but all my projects are always on my Ravelry page. A US four. So I had, this was a free pattern download that they had sent out a while back, over a year ago. And I just used the download that was on my computer. And then literally as I was binding off this hat, I checked the pattern page and there was errata and now called for you to go down to, I think, a size two needle for the brim, which makes sense. So I have not worn this. It has sat in a draw, drawer, draw, drawer, um, because when hats are too big, they're not comfortable. So it is kind of what it is. Maybe if I meet someone with a large head one day, I will give it to them, but I'll put it on for you. So it fits like a tam basically but it's it's got a lot of space um there it is i mean it's adorable like it's i think it's really cute but it's just it's too big and it was a shame because it took me a while to knit because it was a lot of cabling i mean you were cabling uh, every a couple like every other stitch it felt like and i used a cable needle because i am terrible at cabling without a cable knit needle, it just doesn't work for me. <laughs> I have tried. And so it was a lot of cabling, but it wasn't too bad. It was kind of a relaxing knit other than, um, you know, the cabling. Not every row was cabled. That was like every, I'm not gonna say because it's, it's a paid for pattern, but you can kind of tell, I mean, where the, where this, the ribs start to meet or separate is where the cable happens. So it's not every row. Um, and for the pom-pom, I don't have a pom-pom maker. Every time I wanna make a pom-pom, I go back to my old school roots, which was when, <laughs> uh, which results in a scruffy pom-pom uh, since perfectionism, you know, I I am very much a perfectionist, but, but in a lot of ways, I'm kind of like a, fuck it, it's good enough type of person. <laughs> so, um, you know, it's one of those situations. I, I go towards uh, the old school way of making a pom-pom, which is DIY it um, with two pieces of cardboard and a donut shape. So if you don't know what I'm talking about, I'm sure you could Google that. Um, but yeah, this was a fun hat to make. And Quince & Co. yarn, I think, is just perfect for hats. I mean, the stitch definition is really nice. They wear pretty well. Um, I would like to make another hat out of Chickadee because I like the weight of this. Um, that was why I made one to begin with. Um, so perhaps soon, but um, yeah. Chickadee is the sport weight yarn, by the way, from Quince & Co's core wool line. Um, if you're not aware, I kind of knit almost everything in Quince & Co. <sighs> Although my two works in progress right now are not in Quince & Company. So cool. So my next finished object um, is another one that I had shown you last time, which is my Jody Cowell by Barbara Collins, I think. And this one I modified a little bit by making it um, wider and uh, meaning wider between the top and the bottom. And I also omitted uh, it calls for a stripe in the ribbing at the top of a contrasting color, and also um, the ribbing is, I think, about an inch and a half, um, and I only did about, I think it's probably close to a quarter of an inch, uh, but the rest of the rest of the project is in this slip stitch color work pattern, which looks different from the front and the back. I'll show you the inside. I think the inside kind of is even cooler than the, you're seeing the seam. Let me find you where you don't have to see the seam. Um, I think the inside really kind of is fun compared to the outside actually. And I did this in a low contrast colors. Um, you can see I used a light gray and a camel color. Um, and this once again is another Quince & Co. Chickadee project. 
and I believe this was knit totally in size 7 needles. Um, so the gray, I believe, is Iceland, and the camel color is camel. Um, I have not blocked this. I have not worn it. Uh, and that's just because um, I, I mean, this project I don't feel like needed to be blocked. It could be to be a little bit wider. Um, it could use being a little bit wider. With wearing, it would go wider. Um, but it's just pretty even overall, so I didn't feel like it was necessary versus like a, a shawl where <laughs> with most shawls, the magic is in the blocking. Um, so, yeah, I haven't worn this even though I finished this, I think I finished this in February. It was like the first thing that I was working on when I was able to restart knitting. Um, and that's just because for some reason, I kind of just hit a point this winter mainly because I wasn't feeling well, where I didn't want anything constricting or close to my neck. So despite how cold it's been, I've just been wearing my winter coat and nothing around my neck, which is not like me. I always wear my scarves or what have you. I've worn no knitwear. I just like didn't want anything there. Um, and also, I wanted it to be wider, but I think it's a little too wide, which <laughs> it doesn't, so it doesn't fit quite so well when you wrap it around twice. It's like, it's a lot of cowl, which is why I do think that it would benefit from some blocking to kind of stretch it out a little bit further and make it less wide. Ironic. So here it is on, on looped once, which doesn't really do much. And then here it is looped twice, which I have to kind of adjust this which is hard since I'm in front of a camera and that's reversed and not a mirror. But you can see it fits. Now I'm wearing a shirt color that's like the same color as this, so I feel like it's not so cute. But um, you can see it fits really close to the neck, which is nice, which is what I was going for. And you know, you have plenty of that, which is always what I'm aiming for in the winter is to kind of be all the way up to the eyes because with wind that's where it bites you Oy. okay i've been growing my hair a little bit mainly out of laziness <laughs> of not getting a haircut but i'm not used to having as much hair as i do okay no one cares about that that's okay so that is my jo jody cowl and um yeah Barbara Collins, I believe is what I said. I really love this pattern. I think it makes such a cute finished object. And yeah, this would look so different depending on what yarns you use. I said this with my last project, but if you look on my project page at the original one I did, I mean, it, it, it's just, a, it's a totally different look. So um, I like that. And this stitch pattern is, this the slip stitches is so unbelievably squishy. Um, it's just lovely. And it's really fun to work. It's simple. This was kind of almost boring, mainly because, and I like simple patterns. If you prefer kind of more complicated knitting, then this would be very simple for you. But um, I, I think mainly this was a little boring for me because I'd already done it. <clears throat> but I still liked it. I mean, it's like, it's essentially ribbing the whole thing. So that is my Jody cow. <laughs> Okay, I don't think we're going to be talking for too long today, um, which is probably a good thing, but, you know, I don't know. Depends how you feel. Water break! Uh, I've been trying to find a um, little segue here. I've been trying to find some good podcasts lately, and I kind of struggle with it, and I, I don't know why. I feel like I just, there's very specific types of content and people and formatting that I like to watch. Um, and I don't like everybody that podcasts. I'm sorry. It's just, you know, that's life. And it's been a while since I found a good one, so if you have any recommendations, um, please let me know. Um, I'm not going to kind of list the ones that I like because I feel like 
I don't know, just you tell me. Um, but yeah, okay. <laughs> Let's move on to works in progress. I'll start with um, the one that is older, which has been a little bit of a UFO, although I hope to resume working on it at some point. Uh, so a couple months ago, <laughs> back in December, um, I had this urge one weekend to knit socks again. I know. What's with that? I was home. It was like a really cozy Saturday and it was really cold out and um, my apartment was kind of ch was chilly uh, for whatever reason. I tend to keep, we have um, like classic, I don't know what they're called, like classic radi radiators that, you know, it's, it's water heat so I can turn it on if I'd like. Um, I live in an apartment building so typically it's quite warm in the building and so I spend the majority of the winter with all the heaters off in my apartment. Um, sometimes even with a window open, um, but usually just having them all off is enough because the rest of the heat from the building pretty much makes it warm enough. Um, but on occasion I have to turn on like a heater. But anyway, it was it was chilly in the apartment, which I don't mind it being a little bit chilly. And it was just a really cozy day and um, I decided my feet were cold, so, which rarely happens. I am afflicted with hot, sweaty feet. Sorry if that's TMI. Um, <laughs> My feet were cold, and so I put on a pair of um, ankle socks I had knit years ago out of Patton's Cora yarn that always were, they were a little bit, they're, they fit big, but I put them on, and I always thought like, ugh, this yarn is like itchy, and it's, they fit big, I never really want to wear these. I put them on, and I was so cozy. <laughs> I just was like, this is so nice. I kind of get it right now. Like, as house socks, I get it. So I was like, I want to knit socks now. So that night, I went to Michael's and I got myself some Patton's Croix yarn. And I don't recall the colorway, but it is a self-striping uh, yarn. And I started a pair of socks, and this was like a week's worth of work. And these are knitting up, I think, a little small, but it's hard to tell because it's a ribbed pattern. And I got about probably a halfway, a little more than halfway through the heel flap and then put them aside. Um, so here they are. And I'm using the, it's a three by, it's a free pattern. It's a three by one. See, it stretches quite a bit. Um, it's a three by one rib. Um, I think knitting socks out of ribbing is like all over ribbing is a good way to go if you have trouble with fitting your socks because then you get a lot of stretch um and they tend to be form fitting if that's what you're looking for so i'm a little nervous about it being tight since this yarn is kind of scratchy being tighter means that it's you know more likely to feel kind of scratchy um what is this pattern This is the same pattern that I used to knit the last pair of socks that I knit, which was a couple years ago. Um, and those fit really well. Uh, okay, so it is the Basic Ribbed Socks by Kate Atherley. And then, um, yeah, Basic Ribbed Socks. So simple pattern. And I really was enjoying knitting this a lot. And then I stopped. I think it started to get a little bit annoying with like this hanging down while I was knitting this part, the, the heel flap. And I didn't feel like counting. And then I was like, okay, I'm going to put it aside. And then I wasn't able to knit for a while. And then I had no interest in picking it back up. But I do want to work on it again. And it's a fun kind of self-striping. And Patton's Croy is inexpensive, so... It was sort of worth getting on a whim, I think. So that's my sock work in progress, despite the fact that I declared that I was never going to knit socks again. Here we are. 
Okay, and everything, I've just been shoving all my works in progress in um, this bag, which is my, the one that I, it's like one of the two that I have. It's um, a Jenna Rose project bag. It's linen with this screen printed yellow bees. And then I have um, a little pin on it. I'm not like a pin person. I know pins, have, like enamel pins have become the thing in the knitting community. I don't really get that. It's just, it just seems like, I don't really get fads in general. I, I just don't. I don't buy into it. And I think the enamel pin thing, I mean, I, I, if you enjoy it, then fine. But it just seems like unnecessary stuff. No offense. But anyway, uh, <laughs> this is a free pin. I think that I got, it says, it's farm to needle uh, with a sheep at the top. Sorry, it's kind of like farm to needle. And I think this came with a Tolt yarn and wool order. Or it might have been, yeah, toltyarnandwool.com. So this came with a Tolt order a while back. I don't know when. The last time I ordered from Tolt. Which I would highly recommend as a yarn store to order from online. They have really nice selection of kind of farm yarns and they have Brooklyn Tweed. And uh, their shipping's really fast and they always send goodies with their yarn order so if you're looking for a place to order yarn um you know typically i order from yarn.com but that doesn't you get like a nice discount but that doesn't have you know the, the same type of yarn that uh Tult yarn and wool has so uh if you're looking for like a, a yarn online yarn shop that sells kind of that small batch farm yarn rustic fancy yarn try told um, okay, so my next work in progress is a sweater, but not a sweater for a adult human, but a baby sweater. And this is the, the free pattern. It is the Wax Light pattern, which everyone and their mom has made uh, by Tin Can Knits. I was looking for just a really simple, um, pullover pattern for fingering weight yarn specifically. Uh, the only thing that I don't like about the pattern is that it, there's no differentiation in the neckline for, excuse me, front and back. Um, I have knit a pullover raglan top down sleeve sweater before and having the short rows in the back of the neck so that the back is higher than the front I think is a lot more comfortable for whoever is wearing it, but I didn't have the brain power to figure out how to input it that in myself, and so I just went with the pattern. And I'm knitting the 6 to 12 month size. I initially had cast on the 3 to 6 month size, but it looked, the neck hole looked tiny to me, even though this is really stretchy, and I was like, is this going to fit over a baby's head? Now, I don't know how large babies are. Like, I just don't know. Even though, like, I have a niece and nephew, I just don't know how, how, I, I don't know. I think they're larger than you think they are and smaller than you think they are at the same time. Uh, so here's the, the sweater, and then I'll tell you a little bit about the yarn. It looks so much cuter in person, right? Like, like, on the screen, it looks, like, way more like a sweater than it does in person right now. In person right now, it kind of looks like a little bit of a mess. But we're at kind of, like, a t-shirt stage, um... I just started working on the bottom one by one ribbing and um, next I will have the sleeves to do which are currently on um, on spare yarn uh, and I'm, I am doing the garter detail on the sleeves I know people omit that but it's cute and so um, the yarn Look how tiny it is! Okay, so the yarn is yarn that I bought this past summer when we were on vacation in Maine, in Camden, Maine. I believe it was at the Cashmere Goat. And this is, do I have the, do I have the tag? Let's see. I know it by heart, but I, I'll show it to you if I have it. Yes. So this is Maine Made Hand Painted Dun Roving Yarns. So that's the name of the yarn, Dun Roving. And then that's the name of the base, Frolicking, 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 Frolicking Feet. 
Um, and the website is doneroving.com. And the colorway is all that glitters. And you can see it's 100% domestic superwash merino. This was a, it, it doesn't say 100 grams, it says four ounces. I'm assuming it's 100 grams, I don't know, but 480 yards, so maybe it might be a little bit, a little bit bigger than 100 um, grams because it feels like a true fingering weight to me. Um, and so this is like, I think this is like a local hand dyer to that area. Um, and I had bought this yarn initially to pair with another yarn and stash that I never ended up knitting with. And so I thought it would make a cute baby sweater. It is pooling. You can see kind of that area of more cream with less of the speckles right there. So this side is a little less busy. <laughs> and you can also see like where the yellow pooled over there and then the purpley colors pooled over here. So check out this side versus this side. <laughs> So this side is a lot busier, it's got a lot more going on, um, but I guess, you know, if baby's in the mood to be a little bit funkier, then baby will wear this side, and if this baby that wears this sweater is feeling a little plainer, or a little bit more classic, then she'll go with the slightly less busy side. She, he. So, yeah. That's the baby sweater that I'm working on. And uh, hopefully that will be done soon. I've been really just taking my time with this. And um, yeah. And this yarn is so soft. I really want to make myself like a fingering weight sweater project because it's just so lightweight. Um, I'm knitting this on size fives, by the way. Um, the majority of the body of the sweater was knit on um, these 16 inch circulars, which is by, um, these are the Knitter's Pride. And then I'm currently knitting the ribbing. Well, the ribbing is knit on size two. And I don't have 16, 16 inch circular size two needles, so I'm doing it on my interchangeables on Magic Loop, which is, not, I'm not the biggest fan of Magic Loop, but that's what I'm doing. And it's, you know, so it goes a little bit slower, but like from the armpit to here went so fast and now this is going to go slow, but that's okay. Um, but yeah, it's just the fabric is really nice. And I didn't swatch for this, so like I don't even know if I'm in this, like if it measures out to be the, the correct size in here. And it, it will probably grow a little bit when I wash it since it's a super wash, but I don't really care. I mean, babies are constantly growing, so it's got to fit at some point, and hopefully it will fit within the time range of weather that you wear a sweater like <laughs> I don't know. So that's that. Uh, and I think that's it. Um... That's really all I got. I'm sorry I'm a little scattered today. I hope that you were able to bear with me and um, it was nice saying hello to you. It is really snowing right now. I'm glad that I got home um, when I did. Uh, it was, I got home fine. It, it was okay at driving, um, although it was a little slippery. I saw, definitely saw a few accidents that were a little scary looking. And then I came home and then like the snowing stopped. <laughs> And I was like, well, this is dumb. <laughs> Why does that always happen to me? But, but I knew that they were saying that it was supposed to start pretty bad around this time right now, which is it's about a quarter to five right now. So we're right on the dot for that. Um, the snow is coming down heavy and it's sideways. So I'm glad to not be driving. Um, but uh, I hope everybody is good, safe. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Say hello in the comments, please. Um, if you have any questions or any whatever <laughs> let me know and hopefully bearing in mind the progress of my knitting how fast that goes I will see you again much sooner than three or four months um, things are a little bit crazy right now in the personal life um, we are hoping to be moving soon uh, so that will be 
an event. Uh, <laughs> but I'm assuming you'll see me at least in this apartment one more time. So, yes. Have a good one. Thanks for watching. Thanks so much for watching. And um, I'll talk to you soon. Bye.